Corporate Finance Excel Practice Problem. In this presentation, we're going to work a practice problem in Excel related to earnings per share and gross profit. Time to take a stance with Corporate Finance. Here we are in Excel. We have the information on the left-hand side. We're going to enter that into the blue area on the right-hand side within our worksheets. Also note that we're going to have two tabs here, one for the earnings per share, one for the gross profit. You may have four tabs on the worksheet that you are working on. Two will have the answers to them. Two will have a pre-formatted worksheet that will look like this where you can enter the data for it. We do want to practice using Excel as we go through these problems, especially these beginning problems. So I'm going to go a little bit slower just to go over some detail in Excel. This isn't an Excel course, but we want to get good at just the fundamentals of Excel. If you get the fundamentals of Excel down, you should be able to rework problems like this over and over again at a much higher rate, much faster than you could otherwise do if you were to do this with paper and pencil on a calculator. And that's good practice. Even if you don't have Excel in a test taking situation, you can you can really speed up your practice time and use and learn Excel, which is going to be very useful in uh, practice to 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 learn that skill. So I would just get better and better at this as we go. And working problems like this is the best way to do that. Okay, so now we got our information: 2000 X1 earnings after taxes. We got the 2000 X2 shares outstanding. Then we have on 11 X2 issued new shares: 31,000. And then in X2, earnings after taxes increased by 25%. We're going to be calculating the earnings per share for 2000 X1, 2000 X2. The basic formula for earnings per share is earnings per share after taxes divided by the shares outstanding. Basically, you know, earnings per share after taxes, basically net income on the income statement. So we're taking the income statement number, the earnings, bottom line number in essence, of the income statement divided by the number of shares that are going to be outstanding here we're just basically given that data so for 2000 x1 and notice I'm, what i'm going to do is i'm going to say equals whenever i can i'm going to pull the data this is good practice for excel whenever possible from a, a worksheet data sheet so i'm going to use formulas whenever i can i'm going to i'm going to use um, references that whenever i can so that when you go back to these excel worksheets you can see where the data has come from due to the formula so even with the text files i'm going to say equals and i'm going to pick up the text file when i can and then i'm going to pick up the amount here so instead of typing in the 1 million 70 i'm simply going to say equals in order to pick up that cell i'm hitting the left arrow to go over i'm going to use the keyboard as much as possible you can use the mouse of course to do that you can see i'm on cell b1 at this point in time using the keyboard is going to be faster over time the more you use the keyboard the better you will be then i'm going to uh, take the next piece we're going to divide that by the shares outstanding so i'm going to say equals i'm going to go over to the shares outstanding and enter Note, as you construct these kind of formulas in Excel, you'll start to think about how you could see constructing them in like a vertical type of fashion, as you might see in something like a tax return or something that's going to be set up in a, in a uh, spreadsheet type of format. You can also think about them in terms of a ratio type of format, which might be a linear type of format. So if you were to take a linear algebraic problem and put it into Excel, you would most likely put it into Excel having a long more steps downward right if you were to, to apply certain steps you'd break out each step in the algebraic problem in a vertical fashion it's useful to be able to visualize many uh, formulas in that fashion so you can easily put them in excel and, and explain them to other people even though they're not as condensed as a nice little as a nice tight uh, algebraic formula would be okay so then we're going to be picking up the uh, 311,000. So that's going to give us the. Uh, then, then I'm notice we underlined it here. So I've already got this formatted for you in terms of this underlining that happened on the home tab font group. And then we've got the underline here. Then I'm going to divide out uh, these items. I'm going to say this equals using the equal sign to do the division 1,070,000 and then divided by, which is the dash. And then I'm going to go up arrow one. You can't really see that cell. It got it got boxed out here, but it's cell uh, E3. So there we have it. And then I'm going to hit enter. So we got uh, E2 divided by E3 is going to give us that 3.44. Notice this cell is formatted different than the cell up top. It has decimals. It's already pre-formatted that way. The ones down here will not be. So I'm going to go back in and, and format them for you or with you as we go with those items. But notice to do that home tab numbers and then you got these decimal items to increase the number of decimals 
So then I'm going to say this is going to be the earnings per share. So that's going to be the earnings per share. Okay, so we're going to do a similar process down here for uh, 2000X2. So I'm going to say earnings after taxes. Now the earnings after taxes have adjusted. So you're going to have to type in that formula I copied and pasted. It's going to be increased by the 25% top line increased by the 25%. So if we were to if we were to think about that, we can do a quick little calculation over here and say, all right, well, that's one oh seven oh 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 and then twenty five percent is point two five. So point two five, I'm adding the decimals, home tab number, adding decimals. So I see the decimals now. You gotta get good at basically adding the decimals and formatting the worksheet and we'll work a little bit with that as we go. And then if I was to multiply that out, that's how much it increased by this times this increased by two sixty seven five. And that means that we have then this is going to be equal to the original amount plus the increase. And that's going to be the uh, 1337500. Now we can do that a little bit more quickly by saying, okay, I'm going to say the same number here. And then I'm going to say this is going to be equal to 1 plus the 25% or, or 125%. So if I was to increase that 125 or percent, 125%, and then I'm going to multiply that out. So we'll get to that same number. So I'm going to do that in a formula format now. I want to use these cell references as much as possible, but I want to convert this to 125, basically. So I'm going to say this is equal to, I'm going to pick up this number times, and then I'm going to put brackets around it because I have I want an addition problem, order of operations, meaning that the multiplication will happen before the addition. So I need to put brackets so it does it first, 1 plus the 25%, which will make it 125% times the 1 million 70 and closing up the brackets there we have it so there's the 1 million three uh, 37 five then we have the shares outstanding so shares outstanding they increased by the uh, 31,000 so I'm simply going to take the sum of both of these now because it was 311 before so I'm going to use our sum function now to do that I'm going to say equals sum sum function you could double click the sum here or I would typically say control uh, or shift nine on the keyboard to start the formula. Then I'm gonna select those two cells. So we're going B2 to B3. You can close up the brackets, but you don't really need to if it's just a sum formula because it'll do it for you automatically. Then I would like to put a little underline under this cell. So I'm gonna do that by going to the home tab, font group and underline it. So there's the underline. So this is the drop down. If it's not, if it's on the double underline, you'll see that. And then we're going to have the earnings per share. I'm going to say this is equal to the same, the same name. So I'll pick it up from up top. Same division type of problem. We're going to say this is equal to uh, up arrow twice, pointing to the earnings after taxes divided by the shares outstanding. That's going to give us four. But that's we want to see the decimals. I want to see two decimals. So notice in Excel it depends on how the how the sheet is format as to how many cells you will see you always want to be careful of that i'm going to go to the home tab numbers and increase the decimal to the decimal places i would like to see it at notice that what's really in the cell is something larger than that number but i'm going to close it down to that number also note that if you were to multiply something times that number say 100 times that number it would be this times 100 is different than uh, 3.91 uh, if I was to just type in 3.91 times 100 equals this times 100 if I was to add decimals here you'll see it's a little bit different of a number because this number really isn't simply 3.91 it's 3.9111 08 dot 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 right it's rounded to 3.91 but the actual number it's using to calculate based on this will be the actual number so that means you got to get good at, at knowing these decimals and knowing what's going to happen in terms of rounding uh when you work with excel you have to do it in anything in any kind of thing when you do a calculator and it gives you a hundred different decimals after the after the calculation you're going to have to think about how you're going to deal with the rounding on it and so you'll have to do the same thing with excel it should be easier once you get used to it but you got to get used to the idea that you'll have some hidden kind of factors in there. Also note that the standard format that I'm basically using here is simply uh, this blue color. So like if, if, if I was making this a worksheet that we're going to type in, all I'm doing is going to the 
bucket. I've got this blue already here. If you don't have it here, you can go to the more colors. And then you want to be on the standard side rather than the custom side. And I'm just making them blue, that blue right there. And then I'm just putting up some uh, boxes around it. So like that, that was in the home tab font. And then I'm using all borders to put the box around it. Now I'm going to delete that. I'm going to highlight this, right click, delete it. I'm going to shift the cells up so that these cells underneath it will then replace it. And so there we have it. So there's that. Let's go to the second one. It's going to be a nice short problem here. We're just going to calculate the gross profit. So we'll just do, a, uh, a, in essence, just a subtraction problem. And we'll also take a look at the gross profit percent as well. So the sales minus the cost of goods sold. We want to get really good at this relationship between sales and cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold represents what we are selling. These are going to be income statement timing type of accounts. So if we want to think about the gross profit then, we're going to take the sales item. I'm going to say equal. I'm going to pick up the sales item. Then we're going to pick up the cost of goods sold. I mean, I'm sorry, the number equals the 443,000. Notice I'm going to be pulling this over from the data as much as possible. And then we're going to pick up the cost of goods sold. Now, even though cost of goods sold doesn't have the word expense in it, it is the a major expense, basically. It's the expense of us consuming inventory. If we sell inventory, we inventory went down. We're recording the cost, the use of that inventory in order to generate revenue, which is the sales. So cash isn't, isn't going out, but it is an expense because we're consuming an asset. We're using an asset. We're giving up the asset in order to generate revenue. So this is going to be then the cost of goods sold. This will be equal to the 295,000. And that's going to give us then the gross profit. Now this is a subcategory on the income statement, the gross profit. It's a stop along the way to get to basically the bottom line number, which is net income. So then we're going to subtract these two out. This equals the 443 minus, I'm going to say up one, the uh, 295. So it's going to be E2 minus E3. Then I'd like to underline this cell. I want to underline in it to show that it's a, it's a calculation here. So I'm going to go to the home tab, font group. And notice you, if you work with someone else with Excel, you want to start getting good at naming these things because especially if you work over the phone or something like that, you want to be able to say, this is the home tab, point to the home tab. This is the groups in Excel. So we're in the font group. And then we're going to go to the underline. Underline here, we want a single underline. Now you might want another underline down here. You might want to double underline this one. So we go home tab, font group, underline, drop down, double underline. Then we, want, we might want to see the gross profit percent. Percentages are going to be really important uh, for finance because it helps us to compare and measure things against other, other companies and other scenarios, even when the, the total numbers are different, but the relation is, should be similar. So if I want the, the gross profit percent, I would take the 148,000 divided by the 443,000. And that's going to be the gross profit percent. It's got a bunch of uh, decimals in it. <laughs> Let's see. So it's going to be the 0.334. Now I'm going to do that here now uh, by, saying, by using a formula. This is going to be equal to the 148 divided by the sales, the 443, and enter. So notice it, it's a zero. What, what happened? Well, now I'm going to format it. I'd like to see this in a percentage type of format. So I'm going to go to the home tab numbers group. I'm going to hit the percent button now, and that'll take it to two places with no decimals. If I want to see more decimals, there may be more decimal home tab numbers group, add decimals, this one, and you could see a little bit more information. Now you could also do the same thing for cost of goods sold, all right? I could say, okay, what's the percentage of cost of goods sold relation to sales? Because sales is basically our objective here. These are these are going to be the what's the relation to the like kind of like the main number that what what we're trying to do generate revenue. So the two the two ninety five divided by the sales, and then once again I'm going to go to the home tab numbers, make it a percent. I'll add two decimals to it. Right. And then and then we could do like obviously sales divided by sales would simply be sales divided by sales. 
and then I would go home tab, numbers group, add decimal and, and percentage, and then add decimals, 100%. So in other words, if I was to do it this way, 100% and uh, 66.59, I'm going to format these. Now I'm going to format these using the same format, meaning I'm going to highlight these and format them over here. So I'm going to highlight these, home tab, clipboard, I'm going to paintbrush it, copying the format only. So I'm going to use the paintbrush. And then I'm just going to click on one of these items that way it'll format it for us. Then if I was to take the 100% minus the 6659, that's going to give us that 33.41 once again. So we may want to do some underlines here, we could do the same thing, I can I can highlight these two, home tab, font group, underline, put an underline here. I could double underline these two, go here, highlight those or select them, home tab, font group, drop down, double underline those items. So those are a couple of the calculations and I'll, just a little bit on, on some formatting uh, within Excel.